It is now day two of Iceland's destructive eruption which has sadly torn through a section of the town of Grindavik. Currently, it appears that about 2.66 million cubic meters of lava have erupted, covering a total of 0.76 square kilometers or 188 acres. While lava is continuing to advance in flows of material, the progress and rate of effusion has continued to rapidly decrease. For example, as of hour 18 of the eruption, it appeared that only 15 cubic meters of lava was being emitted, down from double this very amount only 8 hours earlier. And, in hour 31 of the eruption, lava effusion dropped to only 5 cubic meters per second. While it is still way too early in my opinion to make a determination, a case can be made based on looking at the December 2023 eruption that the current eruption may end only 36 hours after it began. This reduced rate of lava fusion has thankfully caused the southernmost of the two erupting fissures to first drop to a trickle before ceasing altogether. This means that lava is unlikely to damage any more structures in Greenvik during the current eruption. However, lava did still slightly advance in the last 24 hours, leading to potential damage to four additional homes, although there were no immediate obvious signs of additional homes being completely destroyed. These losses are quite tragic, representing the worst volcanic damage Iceland has encountered due to lava flows since the Eldful volcano erupted in 1973 on the island of Jaime. A few locals gave me some additional context that a sizable portion of residents who left Jaime as a result of the 1973 eruption went to live in Grindavik. This means that there are likely people who have evacuated twice due to volcanic eruptions in their lifetimes. As tragic as these structural losses are, totaling between 3 and 7 buildings, I want to remind everyone that the vast majority of Grindavik, aka more than 99% of the town, is still standing. The main cause of this, aka the current savior of the town, is the lava barrier to the north which was built in recent weeks. Only one small section of this wall was breached where a breach involving 18,000 square meters of lava occurred, with this happening on Iceland Road 43. I do not think this is a coincidence that it just so happened to fail on a road, and this can teach us a lesson. My reasoning is that the coefficient of friction on pavement is much lower than on the highly rocky basalt-covered landscape typical on the Reckoners Peninsula. As a result, when dozens of tons worth of lava began placing force on the lava barrier overlying the road, it simply pushed the dirt and rock out of the way as the overlying material did not adhere very well to the pavement. One potential solution to this problem in the future is to place layered vertical rebar in sections of lava walls that overlay pavement, concrete, or an unusually flat rock surface such as slate. Ever since the southern of the two fissures appear to have ceased erupting, lava output has been confined to a weakly erupting spatter cone at these approximate coordinates. I want to highlight an aspect of the eruption which a few people may have noticed. The initial body of shallow magma, not all of which reached the surface, was approximately one mile in length and involved what appear to be two fissures on the surface. However, this actually occurred across eight separate smaller fissures as pre-existing weak points in the crust were utilized by erupting lava. Earthquake activity in the last 24 hours has also decreased, although if you plot all of the recent seismic activity, you will note two interesting structures. The first is a 10 km long section of the original 15 km magma dike created on November 10th of 2023, with the current extent likely indicating where some form of liquid magma is present underground. The second feature is a northeast trending line 3,000 meters in length of the Fagridolsviak volcano, which may represent where magma is present, perhaps from a past failed intrusion underground. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.